Hi everyone, day two at Sea Airspace 2023. We start today's video report on the new weapon systems by General Atomics and then we'll take a close look at some of the unmanned systems on display on the show floor. We're now over at the General Atomics booth, who's showcasing for the very first time a smart extended range precision munition that can strike moving targets at sea, so such as ships. The round features uh, wings and uh, shark uh, gills, so let's try to find out more. Nick, what can you tell us about this uh, new system? So we have a very unique long-range maneuvering projectile. Basically our goal is to provide something that is long range, twice the, the range from a standard Army M777 155 millimeter launcher of, I'll say, existing rounds and rounds in current development, but also something that has maneuverability to be able to essentially do end game maneuvers as well and to provide the lethality with it and very precise to be able to get close to the target so that it can essentially create, create the effects that are needed to, to fulfill the missions that it has. The shape of the shell is quite unique. It's not round, it's more like triangular. It looks like a missile actually, why, why is that? So what we, what we found was that for getting that extra range as well as that maneuverability that I mentioned, you want to have some extra surface to create extra lift for the long range as well as reduce the drag, again, to get that very long range. And this shape is very unique in the ability to provide the control surfaces along with the hard surfaces that give you that both maneuverability as well as range capability. And it's, it's actually something we've tested in wind tunnels a number of times, and we've done testing out of uh, both a compressed air gun as well as out of a, a normal gunpowder uh, launcher as well to ensure the survivability, to ensure performance and aerodynamics. And so it's actually a really um, unique shape that produces the results that we need in both of those dimensions in terms of range and maneuverability. Uh, one of the things that you see in the mid body, we have what we call uh, our shark gills. Uh, they're essentially uh, hooks where the sabot round will essentially attach to the round. And what this allows is us, instead of pushing from the rear of the round, it allows us to essentially pull the round out from the mid part of the body. That helps in terms of structural integrity during the launch phase, and also provides a, a, m a much better distribution of the stresses from launch on the projectile. So you tested the 155 millimeter variant, but uh, I understand it's scalable because in this uh, on this poster you're showing it shooting out of a five inch gun from a DDG 51. Correct. So we've been focusing on the uh, 155 round, but it is scalable. The performance will be a little bit different because the round would be a little bit smaller, would essentially be a little bit shorter as well, and as a result, the wings wouldn't be as long, and so that would reduce the the range performance. The maneuverability would be a little bit less, but still significant. So, you know, the, the round out of the 155, we're, we're predicting somewhere between 125 to 150 kilometers. And out of a, a five inch gun, we believe we'd be somewhere between 50 and 100 kilometers out of that five inch gun. So, so it's a self-funded project by uh, GAEMS? Yes, we've been doing this on our independent research and development for the last several years. Uh, it's something that has grown out of some of our previous missile and projectile developments and so it's kind of a combination of the two that result in this improvement in performance that we are getting out of this particular round. I'm now with uh, Serco, a naval architecture company based here in the US. They are showcasing for the very first time a scale model of the No Mars, no manning required ship. To learn more I'm with uh, Ryan Mata. Um, this is the uh, DARPA NOMARS platform. It's a medium unmanned surface vessel class um, ship that we will be going to test site this summer and then next year going to construction and then launch. What, what's the idea behind this uh, concept? What, uh, what is DARPA and Circle trying to achieve? So in 2018, uh, DARPA came out with a mission set. They wanted a highly um, 
reliable, long endurance platform that could go to a C for go to C for a year without um, manned interference um, with a 90% availability. So what we have here is a technology demonstrator that'll prove out um, unmanned platforms with a completely different rule set. Uh, so there's no reservations for personnel on board. And we're using that, to, we're taking advantage of that to uh, prove out reliability of a platform. Uh, there's a video behind us showing a test model on a, on a river. Yeah, this is a one ninth scale um, hydrodynamic model that we built. It was part of our qual walk run strategy for coming from a design to build. It's a technology demonstrator. There's not a specific mission set that we're looking for. We were given a reservation for size, weight, space for um, a number of missions. You'll see in the video a humanitarian aid um, style mission. So we have uh, the original reservation was for two 20 foot deck containers or one 40 foot. We've uh, exceeded that. Um, she can carry about a third of her weight in cargo. So in a way, it's the world's most complicated, smallest container ship. And uh, yeah, I mean, to me, it looks like it would be a perfect uh, platform for persistent uh, ISR uh, in the open sea. Right, because it has that flexible mission uh, payload um, and reservations for cooling and electric electrical supply and things like that. It can perform the MUSV mission set as an ISR platform. Correct. Metal Shark, a shipyard based in Louisiana, specializing in aluminum boats. It's showcasing a poster showing the LR USV, Long Range USV. So that's a US Marine Corps program. They are set to deliver a number of USV as well as a support vessel, manned support vessels to support the USVs. They share the two ships share the same hull form. Uh, it's based on the Defiant 40 patrol boat. Uh, you may remember those boats have been uh, transferred to, uh, some of these boats have been transferred to Ukraine as well and are currently conducting operation uh, in rivers in Ukraine. Uh, ship spotters out of uh, the Norfolk area uh, last year around uh, September 2022, I believe, uh, published uh, photos and videos uh, showing uh, ongoing tests of the LRUSV. The long-range unmanned surface vessel of the United States Marine Corps uh, will be fitted with the Hero 120. It's a loitering munition by uh, Israeli company Uvision, and as you can see, it is launched from a tube. We are now with French company Alcimar, who's uh, an exhibitor here at Sierra Space for the first time. They are showcasing the Sea Explorer. It's an underwater glider that we covered recently at uh, Euronaval. With me is uh, Pablo Quiroga, North America Business Development Manager. Pablo, good afternoon. Thanks for welcoming us. Hello. So what can you tell us about this specific uh, glider? So this glider is owned by an American user. So VIMS is the Virginia Institute of Marine Science. And they just deploy it, just come back from mission. We can see actually the scars just here. And it will be deployed in the next month again in different regions of the world. So this one, a very specific configuration, is sort of unique configuration, because you have an ADCP, CTD, FLBBCD, and a micro rider from Rockland. So the link between the ADCP and the micro rider, we are the only to propose this configuration and allow to recover very specific data. And with the ADCP, I have information on the current, and with the micro rider, turbulences in the area. So using both of this information, you can, for example, we can imagine knowing how two different phases of the wire are interacting. Uh, so you're showcasing a different payload uh, right there. Uh, are those hydrophones in the nose of the, the, the Sea Explorer? Exactly, so we are presenting here a new payload. So it's a passive acoustic payload is Aglims NG, new generation. So it's the last generation of our acoustic payload. And what is specific is we are we make gliders, but we make also the sensor. So we have a perfect link between the sensor and the glider, which is very important when you are with acoustic, passive acoustic data. So this one is an open source one. So end user is able to put the soft he wants inside and you can imagine a lot of possibilities with it. But actually what we do in the, with the previous version for use of OCMAR, we work on different projects with the mammals and we are able on specific mammals to detect, classify and track them. So we can imagine because in open source, 
to do detect, classify, and identify other things. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you, Xavier. And uh, as we saw at uh, Euronaval last year, so the DGA and French Navy are looking at uh, different applications for the Sea Explorer uh, with acoustic payload as well in order to be able to uh, passively detect submarines uh, over long duration of times with the, the Sea Explorer uh, loitering in uh, positions underwater.